today I'm going to talk about the way that technologies grow and emerge in multiple waves and to talk about the S-curve as a way of thinking about that. One of the ways to think about how technologies emerge is that stuff tends to turn out small and slow. You have an early period where the technology isn't quite working and it's emerging from university labs and corporate research labs and you've got a few things that look like they're not going to be very useful or important. And then you reach a point where the growth accelerates upwards because everything starts working. You move from the period when this was kind of a crazy idea or not very interesting to a period of frenzy and excitement and growth. That lasts for a couple of years and then things start to slow down again. Every new incremental improvement is harder for the user to perceive. The rate of improvement starts to slow down and the questions shift from is this going to work or what's going to work or what are we going to build to what's going to happen now that we've got tens of millions, hundreds of millions of users, billions of people having this product. In technology this tends to run on like a 5, 10, 20 year cycle. So the PC emerged in the very early days in the 1970s and then it took off in the 1980s around the IBM PC and around Microsoft's operating system and around the Mac. And that S-curve kind of ran up until the, really the 1990s. The new home computers on the market all seem ready to meet the buyer's expectations. And DataQuest predicts that some $10 billion worth of home computers will be sold this year. Then almost 20 years after the first early kind of PC experiments, Windows 95 kind of sealed the deal for Microsoft on, well, that's what the PC is. Just at the point that um, that model had kind of matured in the incremental improvement, then the internet comes along. And that gives a whole bunch of other people a reason to buy this device and a whole new set of experiences that have to be created. And the internet goes from being this crazy, silly idea to becoming something that everyone has. And so the internet, again, has an S-curve from the early 90s through until the late 1990s where you get the frenzy and the bubble. And then the growth slowed down as we got to kind of 2003, 4, 5, 6. Most of the stuff that you could do had been kind of explored and worked out and matured and you were building on top of a platform rather than creating a platform. Just as one S-curve has happened and played out and, and starts slowing down, generally it's the way of technology is, then you get another one. As we were going through the PC S-curve, we were also going through an S-curve with mobile phones. From the early to mid 80s through to the late 90s, mobile phones went from this crazy idea that only drug dealers and billionaires would have and a stupid toy and why on earth are people wasting their time with this? Mobile phones grew to something that everybody on earth would have. And in parallel, mobile phones also had a second S-curve. The smartphone again started in the late 90s, but though people had things that you could technically call smartphones, no one really used them as such until Apple came along with a new paradigm with the iPhone, which Android then picked up and ran with as well. And though the iPhone starter was launched in 2007, the growth of smartphones really only exploded three, four, five years later. And then smartphones went through this explosive S-curve. And today, smartphones are about halfway through that S-curve from crazy idea to explosive growth to slowdown and maturity and expansion. And the question is, what can you build on top of that? And as we now look at smartphones becoming this universal product, really the first time everybody on Earth is going to have a computer, again, we start thinking, well, what's the next S-curve? Machine learning has gone from the crazy idea to now the thing that everyone is talking about. Augmented reality, again, is emerging from a crazy idea to something that everybody is talking about. Those things, in turn, have pretty strong potential to go from the crazy idea to the explosive growth and to the things that everyone just takes for granted. And then we'll start thinking about the next S-curve beyond that.